Welcome to the SMB Community Podcast, produced by the Small Biz Thoughts Technology Community, with your hosts, Amy Babinchek, James Kernan, and Carl Polichuk. We are dedicated to making every IT professional a successful IT professional. Hello, my name is Amy Babinchek, and Carl has asked me to start doing some hosting of the SMB podcast. And so I'm here today actually doing my very first one. And my name's Amy Babinchak. I actually own an MSP up in Michigan that's been in business for about 20 years. And today we're going to talk about uh, the process that I have used to build a really great local contact base that I can go back to time and time again to obtain new clients. So one of the big struggles in running an MSP is to get in front of customers or to know people out in your community who are the business owners and decision makers. And it turns out those folks are all actually in LinkedIn. And I know a lot of people kind of poo poo the whole LinkedIn, like, oh, that's where you go to find a job. But actually it is a really vibrant business community. Uh, And so I wrote a paper on the method that I used in my MSP to create this local LinkedIn uh, organization where I've got a lot of uh, local contacts that are business owners and um, th- it's really borne fruit over and over again. We get, we get a continuous stream of new leads for it. Uh, I'm able to project to the community the type of business that we are, uh, what our expertise is so that when they contact me, they're almost self-selecting that they're ready to start to do business with us because they already have a bit of familiarity with, with the company and, and also with, with me personally. Uh, so this is something that came to me about three years ago and I started doing and it's really borne a lot of fruit for the company. And in conjunction with this and some local events that that we ran, I was able to actually double the size of my MSP from a $600,000 a year business to a $1.2 million business over the course of about 18 months. So this was really the foundation piece that made that happen. Uh, And, you know, one of the other things that's occurred is I'm starting to get speaking requests. I had this weird thing going on where as a Microsoft MVP and a longtime small business community person, I find myself speaking at various various conferences and lots of, of IT people in other states and countries know who I am, but locally in my own town, nobody knew who I was. Yeah. And LinkedIn was kind of the key that, that helped me change that around. And so I started getting these local speaking requests. Recently, I spoke to the Hispanic Chamber of Commerce. I had no idea that there was such a thing, um, but they through this building of the local LinkedIn, they asked me to come speak on security issues. Uh, I also have an upcoming speaking engagement for the Building Owners and Managers Association. Again, another group I had no idea existed, but their full their members are you know people that we would business with, so it's each other if not for LinkedIn. So bears fruit in the public speaking thing, getting out there, also direct one-to-one, one-to-one business. And uh, in this paper, I've kind of outlined the methodology that I use to, to build that community. What I do is I start with my own clients that are already existing, and I will uh, connect with them on LinkedIn, and then I will look to see who else that they're connected with, and I will connect with those people. And I'll send them a maybe a direct message or two, let them know about events we're having, let them know about upcoming speaking events, if any, that I've got going on. Uh, And I also post to LinkedIn. You know, when I do a blog post or something or I see an interesting article, I'll post that to LinkedIn. And when you do that, the people that you're connected with see that in their feed. And so um, in that way, they have this, you know, sort of a constant stream of information from me. And then I'll take that oftentimes one step further and see not only my clients and the people that they're connected to, which tend to also be the same types of people, right? So we want more of the same kinds of clients. So if I connect to my client's clients, we get more of similar types of businesses that we can, we can uh, see as potential new clients for us. And I can take that a third level down and connect to my client's client's clients. Uh, and, and this is how we continue to sort of build out, build out that network. 
Uh, and in LinkedIn, there's a lot of tools in there that let you filter down the t industries that you want to target people in, the size of businesses. And then we use some local knowledge too, you know, they might be doing business with, uh, in my area, with Ford Motor Company, but that's way too big of a client. That would be a waste for me to connect with those people. But they're also connected with suppliers of Ford, which is very common for us to do business with. So I'll look for all those different connections and use my local, local knowledge to build that out. Uh, and it's so, yeah, I start off with maybe, you know, 50 or so contacts, and then it quickly builds up to 500 plus local contacts. Uh, and from LinkedIn, you can also uh, occasionally, if the, if the user of LinkedIn has the information in there, you can download a copy of their mailing address. And direct mail is another thing that I like to do as well, because um, businesses don't often get direct mail. They get a lot of email marketing materials, but they don't usually get direct mail. And so I'll, I'll use my LinkedIn contacts to create that, that mailing list too. Uh, so I find it to be a very effective means now, this paper that I wrote has been picked up by a few other folks out in the community already, uh, and I've invited two of them to, to join me on the podcast today, and I'm going to go ahead and let them introduce themselves uh, just real briefly, and then they have some questions that hopefully everyone here will benefit from, and we're going to talk about uh, the answer to the questions that they have for the paper today. So, John, why don't you introduce yourself first? Sure, my name is John Zanazzi. I'm an MSP here in San Diego, California. I specialize in dental offices and we help dental offices become HIPAA compliant and also help them to keep their IT running, okay? Um, dental offices are kind of a unique niche and I really enjoy working with them. How about you, Leon? Great, hi, I'm Leon Black from Inspired Techs. We're an MSP located in Sydney, Australia. Uh, we've got a good chunk of our client base across medical and real estate. One of our points of difference is we have a real focus around security and also strategy with our clients. So how can we leverage technology as their competitive advantage? Thanks for having us on the podcast, Amy. I know you're very, very welcome. I appreciate you being here. Um, so Leon, why don't we start? Why don't we go ahead and just start with you? What uh, I know that you've had an opportunity to take a look at the the paper and what questions you have uh, about LinkedIn. Yeah, uh, great paper to put together. It was an interesting read and very helpful. It certainly kind of culminates a bunch of the things I know about LinkedIn and that we should be doing, but not really how to do it or what to do with it. So it's, it's good to have a bit of a guide there. Uh, I'm, I'm keen to dig in next month and, and put some actions across that and see what happens. A mm -hmm. um, couple of questions I had about that is in terms to the, you talk about the in-mails and direct messaging contacts that aren't really related. Have you had any negative responses to that? Um, you know, I have not had any negative responses. I had one guy who was, you know, like, hey, why are you contacting me about this? You know, and I said, well, you know, I'm just, I'm a, I'm a local IT person just looking to expand my, my network here in the, in the local area. So I, what I found is that if you come forward to them with a very positive message, that they will receive it positively. Um, and so, you know, I, I like to, I like to really just start out and just tell them exactly who I am so they can choose whether to connect with you or not. Uh, and so, you know, mm. so I'll tell them, Hey, I'm a, I'm a local, I'm a local IT firm, just looking to expand my, expand my networks with other firms that might benefit from the, the knowledge that we have in technology. And, you know, that's sort of my intro message. And if it, the, you know, and, you know, we'd like to connect and they, it's, their power is on them to accept that connection. So once they do then, um, I may not respond to them anything right away because I don't want to come off salesy unless we have an event that's coming up, right? If we have an event coming up, I'll say, hey, thanks for connecting with me. I wanted to let you know that we're having, you know, a free business event coming up on such such a day. And here's a link where you could take a look at some more information about that um, or you know right. something like that if if not i might just let it lie because the point is to get those local connections and then things that you post on your on your linkedin feed from then on they will start to see on on their feed because you're because you're now a mm. connection with them so you don't have to be super salesy it can be a little more of a passive thing 
So, hey, John, what, do you, what kind of question do you have for me? So when I first started getting involved in LinkedIn, I would, you know, people would request that they connect to me and I wasn't very, you know, differential on who I chose to connect with. So I have a lot of people I've connected with in the past, but no contact, kind of almost like unconverted, I guess not, I guess like cold leads. Do you recommend that we go back and individually connect with the people who we've already connected with? Or do we just kind of treat them like, I, I, yeah, or like, do we, yeah, how, what's the best way to handle those? Because, you know, we say, well, I've connected with you in the past, but I don't really know who you are. Does that make sense? Um, yeah, you could, you could do that. I mean, for that, you need to really message them directly and say, hey, you know, it's been a long time since we connected. I just wanted to take a minute to reintroduce myself and maybe send them a little, a little blurb on you. And that, that connection will sort of raise you up on their feed as well. So, you know, LinkedIn and Facebook have some commonalities in that the clients of the people that you interact with the most are the ones that are gonna show up the most in your feed. So when you, so when you reestablish that contact via, via messaging, that's going to change the way that they see you in your feed. So part of this process of you know, developing that is to go in there every day and post something new just on your general feed. Your people that you're contacted with uh, will see it, but the ones that you've most recently contacted or had some interaction with are going to see that closer to the to the top of their feed. You know, and I'll give you another hint too. I have found that the end of the workday, like the last hour of standard business working hours, tends to be when people visit LinkedIn. So when I post something out there that I want my local community to see, I'll post it around between 4 and 4.30 p.m. Uh, because I don't know why, but people tend to take a look at their LinkedIn around that hour. I've just kind of figured that out over time. <laughs> Do you have anything else, follow-up question? Um, yeah, yeah, definitely. Oh, you go, John. You sure, Leon? Uh you yeah, can go. Yeah, I'll grab the next one. <laughs> okay. Right. So it's actually for both of us. Um, we both deal in medical with medical professionals. Mm -hmm. um, a, a lot of times it seems like, in, in, in my case, a lot of times the office manager or the practice manager is the one who is doing a lot of the, the correspondence with respect to LinkedIn. Have you found a way that you can actually... Well, has there any been any studies with respect to LinkedIn and, and the medical community, you know, medical professionals? And two, is it typically the actual doctor who's corresponding on LinkedIn or is it more like the office manager also? Uh, so when, when I go through and make contacts, I am actually looking for the business owner and also whoever is the gatekeeper in that, in that business. So I, I, choose not to to contact you know only the only the top person in the business because yeah, I, I most of my business is in small business right we, we're focused on like a hundred people or fewer 100 computer users or fewer uh, so in that small business realm and what I find is that uh, the gatekeeper or a fairly low level person that you would think of low level person in the company is actually the one that is going to introduce a new IT firm in, right? It's that person who uh, a lot of times when we are working with our clients, we have meetings and things with the business owners when we're, you know, helping them define the direction or, you know, we like to keep track of what their dreams and goals are for their business. But our daily interactions are often with whoever the designated person is to deal with IT, right? And a lot of times that is an office manager or, uh, you know, somebody, somebody kind of in, in that role. Uh, and so I will look for those people in LinkedIn and also, also get connected with them. 
Because like you said, the, the doctor in your case with the medical profession isn't going to always be sitting on LinkedIn. And a lot of times they may be the final decision maker, but they're not the one that goes out and looks for new firms. Someone's going to bring that information to them and they're going to say yay or nay about it. Oh, okay. I don't, yeah, I don't have any specific data about, about medical, but I think I have a feeling, you know, most medical practices are also small businesses. Sure. And I, th I think small businesses tend to tend to behave in the same way. But one of the great thing about small business, working in small business is that all it's all very personal, right? They want to know you. They want to feel like they know you really well. That's the thing that keeps that that business relationship going in, in small businesses. When you get up into medium and enterprise, it becomes more of a machine. But on the small business end, it's definitely a relationship driven process. Great. Makes sense. Yeah. Thank you. So you had awesome. something you wanted to say, Leon? Yeah. In in your intro you were mentioning how you use this methodology to essentially double your business from where it was at. How long ago was that that you did kick that off? Uh, we took that off about two years ago. Okay. And so, is and it that took, to took where about, it is currently? Yeah, we took about 18 months to double it, and it's kind of kept going. Um, I'm actually adding two more staff at this point because we're, we're the, it seems to have a quite long tail that we have this really good continuous stream of new clients coming to us now, which is really wonderful. We're not having to do a lot of outbound marketing other than this process and they're, they're, they're coming in. And we, we tag it on with, with the events that we hold. And then we found that it has a really long tail. You just kind of keep doing it and the, the leads keep coming in. Okay. And just a quick content question. You talk about using Hootsuite to schedule out your posts. Uh, it wasn't quite clear, but I figure you're talking about doing daily content posts. Do you mean every day of the week or business days? Uh, just business days. Okay. And um, yeah, ideally, I would like to have a post going out every day. And so I will use the Hootsuite product and there's several others, but that's the one that I chose. But you can schedule it out, right? Because one of the things this can happen is that, uh, you know, you forget to forget to do it. And so uh, having that consistency of posts, I think is is really important. People may not remember that they saw you two or three weeks ago, but they will remember that they've, you know, seen you in the last couple of days. And since uh, people are typically not looking in their LinkedIn every single day, but they'll be in there, you know, maybe once a week or so. So you always want to make sure that you have something, something recently posted that's going to, that's going to pop up in their feed for them. Okay, and on the content front, do you have any suggestions or opinion around um, doing live video? Uh, I I have not gotten into live video, so um, and that's a fairly new feature in LinkedIn as well. You know, the kind of uh, live live mini mini live event sort of deal. Um, I know video content is is very very popular in general on LinkedIn. Um, and also, if also, of course, in YouTube, the advice that I would have there, though, is to, I would keep it very, very short because um, people tend to be scanning through a lot of things. So they're not going to spend a lot of time looking at your at your video. Um, I would really keep it very short and sweet if, if you were going to do video on LinkedIn. Okay. Um, you know, unless, you know, what you could do is rather than an instant live thing is, you know, you could advertise that you're going to be doing some specific awesome content at a particular time and invite people to show up at that time, you know, when you're going live, maybe preface it up that way instead of depending on, depending on people to be sort of active in LinkedIn at that moment and seeing your live content, I would definitely try to promote it beforehand if you could. There's a lot of great small topics that you could do, certainly around security. You know, there's a lot of great bite size content that you could you could do short videos on. I think that may be quite effective, particularly in your industry. 
Okay. Well, guys, I really, really appreciate you coming here and asking questions today. Uh, I, you know, I, I wrote this paper hoping to be able to help out other people because it's been such an effective means for me. And I know that we're all out there trying to grow our businesses. And this is sort of the type of content that I hope to keep going here. And when it's my turn to, to host the podcast, and I hope everyone would find it very valuable today. And I look forward to doing some more of them. So thank you guys for joining me here today. Very much appreciated. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for having us. Uh, you're very welcome. Thank you for tuning in to the SMB Community Podcast. If you found this useful, interesting, or fun, please subscribe, share with your friends, and give us a thumbs up on your favorite social media. Please check out the show notes at smbcommunitypodcast.com and give us your feedback.